Let's compare the new M2 MacBook Air against the kind of still current generation M1 MacBook Air. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and the new M2 MacBook Air is finally available to own in your hands. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the differences, changes and benchmarks between this new model and the prior generation M1 MacBook Air. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about from the whole redesign to the new chip that's on the inside. So stick with me, let's go ahead and dive into it. Starting off, let's look at the design because Apple did redesign the MacBook Air for the first time in many years. Gone is the taper that we've had for pretty much the entirety of the MacBook Air's life. And we've now gone to a new flat design that's very much in line with the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. The M1 MacBook Air came in silver, space gray, and gold. For the M2 model, Apple has ditched the gold, but kept silver and space gray. And in place of gold, Apple introduced starlight as well as midnight. We've seen these colors on things like the Apple Watch and iPads, and now Apple's bringing them here to the Mac. As I'd mentioned, the new MacBook Air has ditched the taper from the last generation MacBook Air. The new model has a straight body all the way across. The prior model tapered from 0.41 centimeters all the way up to 1.61 centimeters. The new model is roughly 1.3 centimeters all the way across. So it's thinner than the thickest part of the prior generation MacBook Air. But the front of it, which used to be 0.1 centimeters, is now a bit thicker because it has, again, ditched that taper. But it overall feels incredibly thin and small. It's kind of weird how, you know, in some areas it's thinner and in some areas it's thicker, but it feels overall thinner than the previous version. It's also a little bit lighter. The new MacBook Air weighs 1.7 pounds, or sorry, 2.7 pounds, whereas the last generation MacBook Air weighed in at 2.8 pounds right next to each other it's it's really hard to tell the difference like maybe but it could just be you know a placebo effect that i just think that it's lighter and maybe you know i can or can't tell but hey i'm just happy for any decrease in weight no matter how small apple has made some small adjustments to the ports on the right hand side both the current and last generation models have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack but the left side of the machines has changed just slightly they still had the two Thunderbolt Type-C ports, but the new MacBook Air has added MagSafe 3. Comes with a MagSafe 3 cable, and Apple, Apple even gives you the option for a dual 35-watt power adapter with two USB-C ports on it. Or you can stay with a standard 30-watt brick, but it's nice to give you options. But it gives you one more port on your Mac because instead of having to use those USB-C ports for charging, you can use MagSafe for charging and rely on USB-C for connecting peripherals. If you don't have your MagSafe cable around, you can still always charge up via USB-C, which is just really handy. If I could just interrupt myself for one moment, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Jamf. Jamf is the de facto standard in Apple mobile device management, and it's trusted by more than 62,000 businesses, schools, and hospitals. Apple's exceptional hardware is only half of the equation how you secure, manage, and empower your users with that technology is the other half, and Jamf makes that happen. Jamf has the ability to scale to any business, whether you've got just a handful of iPhones or iPads or tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, or Apple TVs, Jamf can be your solution. Jamf is ready to scale to any size business, whether you've got a handful of iPads or you have tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, and Apple TVs, Jamf can be the solution. Recently, it introduced App Installers, which is an automated way for IT teams to update third-party Mac apps when a new version is released. Jamf automatically sources, packages, and deploys the new versions, ensuring users have the latest features and security patches. On a personal note, I've actually had the opportunity to sit down with several organizations that have rolled out Jamf MDM solutions in their businesses, and they have always spoken extremely highly of Jamf software and credited it with making all of their goals a reality. You can get started today and start your free trial by following the link that is down in the description or by heading to jamf.com. Thank you again very much to Jamf for sponsoring this video.
Both the M1 and M2 MacBook Airs could be outfitted with up to two terabytes of storage, and they each start off with 256 gigs of storage. That's still really small, and I wish Apple would have started off the base model at 512 gigs, but alas, both models are starting only at 256. The M1 MacBook Air started off with eight gigs of unified memory, but you could upgrade it to 16. With the M2 MacBook Air, it still starts off at eight gigs of unified memory, but it is faster and you can outfit it with up to 16 or 24 gigs. So you have a definite increase in the amount of memory supported on the M2 MacBook Air. Another big change is the screen. Apple has increased the screen size from 13.3 inches to 13.6. Basically, they increased it the size of that menu bar, giving you additional screen real estate for what you're working on. The menu bar now sits on either side of a notch that houses the updated 1080p FaceTime camera. I kind of like this. It gives you just more screen real estate and I don't mind the notch at all. For the screen dimensions, it previously was 2560 by 1600, now it's 2560 by 1664. So you're getting 64 additional pixels in that menu bar area on the new MacBook Air. As I said, Apple also had upgraded the FaceTime camera going from 720p to 1080p. It definitely makes a difference. Here are some side-by-side -side photos between the two. It also helps that Apple has improved the ISP in the M2 processor. So overall image just looks better than it did on their last generation MacBook Air. But if it's up to me, I would still prefer using continuity camera and my iPhone on macOS Ventura when that actually ships. That's still gonna give you much better image quality than anything that's baked into the bezel of your Mac. But hey, it's nice that it's upgraded for when you do have to use that built-in camera. The screen's also a bit brighter too. I took it outside in our patio and it's a super sunny day today and I did notice a difference. One of the biggest things that I loved doing with my MacBook Air when I had gotten like the original one was sitting outside and working, whether it was for work work or college, anything like that. So any additional brightness was helpful just dealing with the sun and everything like that. So yeah, it's going from 400 nits to 500 nits and you can tell the difference, but if you're inside, it's not a huge difference either way unless you're trying to crank the brightness up in a really super bright office for some reason. Both screens are perfectly bright and I didn't really have any complaints with the last generation MacBook Air. If we look at audio real quick, Apple did upgrade the headphone jack. So it's still a standard headphone jack, but now it supports high impedance headphones. So high end headphones. On the other hand, Apple improved the speakers of the machine. The M1 MacBook Air only had two speakers inside, so a single set of stereo left and right speakers. The new one makes two, so two on the left and two on the right. So overall, listening to audio for at least a little bit here, it sounds more full, sounds just a little bit larger soundstage. I don't know if it's much louder than the previous one, but it sounds a little bit more full. And I think the 3D spatial audio effects are more precise. With four speakers to manipulate instead of just two, it's able to get a little bit more accurate with that spatial audio, 3D, Dolby, Atmos effect, but it's still not as good as listening on my headphones or with a like legit Dolby Atmos setup. The big thing to talk about is Apple's M2 processor. The new M2 processor upgrades many ways over the M1. Now I already did a detailed video on the M1 versus the M2, so if you want all the specifics, go check out that. But the biggest benefits that I wanna mention here is we have improvements in how much memory bandwidth there is. It's going from a seven or eight core GPU to an eight or 10 core GPU. And even though it's still only an eight core chip, Apple has increased the clock speed of those cores. So it just generally feels a little snappier than the last one. The M1 was no slouch and I never had issues just opening apps and using it. And I don't really notice a difference in any day-to-day -day tasks with the M2. It still seems pretty much just as fast, though I'm gonna continue to do further testing over the next several days and weeks to see how much it impacts it with sustained performance, especially compared to the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro. So stay tuned for some additional benchmarking. But if we look at what the benchmarks that we got now, in the CPU test of Geekbench, the M1 scored a 1693 for the single core and a 7195 for the multi-core. Our M2 processor, which again is still just eight cores, scored an 1898 and an 8941. You can see the speed improvement on the higher frequency M2. 
when we go to graphics, the M1 scored a 2284 for its 8-core GPU, the higher-end one, and the M2 scored a 26123, still an 8-core GPU, but clearly higher performance. When we go to disk speeds, the M1 was getting write speeds around 2689, and the read speeds were 2484. But the M2, we're definitely seeing slower numbers, only 1600 megabytes per second in write speed and 1158 in read speeds. So a big decrease in the SSD performance, at least on the entry level units. So that pretty much covers it. There are quite a few improvements on this MacBook Air. And honestly, this is the one to get. Like I'll talk about more in the full review, but the new M2 MacBook Air is the one that most people out there should be buying. I love the new redesign, I love the power of the M2, and I love the other improvements that Apple has added here. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you'd like to grab the new MacBook Air, we have some links and deals already rounded up in the description down below. Otherwise, stay tuned, I got a lot more videos coming your way.